Now, during the first quarter of this year, the banking sector has reported increase in profits in comparison to corresponding financial period of last year. However, many leading companies in the country have reported a decline in profits during the first six months of 2018. During the first six months in 2018, many leading companies in Sri Lanka have reported a drastic decline in their profits. The profits of certain leading companies have gone down by 25%. However, many companies operating in the banking sector have reported an increase in profits ranging from 14% to 20%. The following data reveals profits made by three leading banks in the country during the past six months. Microfinance is one of the key profit generating business units of most banks and finance companies. I wouldn't say most banks, but it's mostly the finance companies. And how are these profits generated from microfinance? At the expense of the poor borrower, the, the wide interest spreads, 30 to 40 percent, sometimes I think it's 60 and 70 percent. So this is all to do with responsible banking. How can you expect a borrower to repay a debt where the interest rate is so high. And the board of, boards of management of banks should undertake a keen analysis of the profitability of their finance companies and the banks. Ask the CEO and the key management personnel, how are you able to generate all these profits? When there's an economic downturn, if the corporates are not making profits, are not be able to uh, increase their profits, why is it that the banks are able to? After all, economic growth, comes through the banking system and the corporates. So why is it that one sector is able to generate profits and the other sector is not? There's something, some problem there. Due to the lack of regulatory measures in the microfinance industry, unregulated microfinance activities have led to illegal deposit mobilization, exploitation of customers through excessive interest rates and unethical recovery methods. Many illegal microfinance institutions charge interest rates as high as 40 to 50%. Due to the lack of rain, crops were destroyed in several instances. We took loans and to repay previous debt, continue to take more. The finance institutions provided these loans willingly. These institutions said that loans will only be provided for self-employment and for farming. Initially, these institutions are very friendly and only concerned on granting the loan and less worried about repayment. Once loans are taken, they ask us to find more customers. When repayment gets tough, we reach a point where we cannot repay the debt anymore. However, unlike before, these financial institutions are no longer friendly. And we are pressurized to repay installments somehow or the other, even by selling the pots and pans in our houses. It is in this background that the government launched a program in August last year to repay loans obtained by females up to a value of 100,000 rupees. Microfinance companies visit villages and provide loans with high interest rates. There is a limit of 40% now. Does the central bank have any measures in place to monitor this limit? Interest rates are currently capped at 35% and plans are to keep this rate in control. It is difficult to maintain control and overcome this issue. In order to overcome this issue, the best solution is to make people aware of this situation and increase their financial literacy. Programs are conducted to increase financial literacy. It will take time to address this issue. Financial literacy, interest rate caps and maintaining dialogues with the microfinance institutions to maintain responsible behaviour are the main solutions for this problem. For over a decade, several attempts were made to enact legislation to regulate the unregulated institutions in the microfinance sector in Sri Lanka. Finally, the parliament enacted the Microfinance Act No. 6 of 2016, which came into effect on the 15th of July 2016. The Act provides for the licensing, regulation and supervision of companies carrying on microfinance businesses, which are called Licensed Microfinance Companies or LMFCs. LMFCs would be directly regulated by the Monetary Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The Act provides for the registration of microfinance non-governmental organizations MNGOs registered under the Voluntary Social Services Organization Act No. 31 of 1980 by the Registrar of Voluntary Social Service Organizations.